Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It is the Razzball Fantasy Baseball Podcast. I am beat on, joined by the Fantasy Master Lothario, the mustachioed, spectacled, man of mystery, Gray Albright. <laughs> How you doing over there, Gray? Good, man. Uh, good. I uh, I just had a flashback to... Uh, I... <laughs> oh, yeah. I, this is like... This is quite the story to start the uh, the podcast with. But I have a, a trainer come twice a week. Um, and uh, she uh, she comes and she works... Uh, Coogs and I out in, our, in my office. And my office is... You know, it's not a big... It's not a big space. But I have a bathroom. Uh, well, long story short is I, I had an upset stomach and then, uh, <laughs> and then, and then she came like maybe 20 minutes later <laughs> and it's like, it's not like the, uh, the fan doesn't work as well as it should. Anyway, I, I don't know. I just <laughs> thought of that because I just farted. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> that's uh thank you for that intro, Gray. That's, it's a phenomenal way to bring us into the podcast. We have now lost anybody who was going to listen. But please, if you're with us, you know, I thought you were going in a different direction there. But now that's really awkward and and off-putting. We can move over to something else that is awkward and off-putting, Gray. Um, The the Wando Franco, I'm going to call them allegations for now. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure we're the only ones that transition from that kind of story into this Wander Franco story. That's as good uh, as I could do. I thought that was that was a that was pretty professional for for us. As you as you laugh like a child, as we said we wouldn't do. Um, so yeah, it's not yeah, it's not good. Uh, it's not a good story. That's okay. So it's um, not. yeah, so I guess. Uh, so we're we're flying a little bit blind right now because we're recording this on Monday morning. So no one really has any uh, facts yet on the Wander Franco story. Uh, all we know is that there was allegations that uh, he was in an improper relationship with a fourteen year old. That's that's where we're. That's all we have at this point. So it's it's hard to say exactly what exactly is going on. I don't, you know, none of us know. I I put it out. I made the mistake of uh, putting it out on Twitter saying the on Sunday, like when the story was breaking, I said on Sunday something to the effect of like, you know, it's very telling that there's no national baseball writers saying anything like, you know, trying to verify the Wander Franco news. Like, and that got so much pushback that people were like, you can't say anything yet. Like, I wasn't saying he's guilty. I wasn't saying they should say he's guilty. All I was saying was someone should be trying to verify the story. <laughs> That's all. That was literally all I was saying was like, I'd like to hear someone verify what's going on, like, or someone at least attempting to verify it. It's just so bizarre that we're in a place where, like, this might be a sports thing more so, more than a news thing, or at least more than a regular reporter thing. But like, there's no like, there's no attempt to try and verify a story like that. Only thing they are doing is like waiting for the Rays or the league to do their due diligence, which is, you know, that's fine. But like if so, we're just completely reliant on MLB and the Tampa Bay Rays. That's it. Like if it so if they do a half ass job with, you know, their due, uh, their due diligence, then that's the story then that's it that's that's all you're getting basically from you know from sports writers but i don't know i guess that's i guess that's just the way things are now <laughs> i sound like i sound like a real boomer i i mean i don't know i i don't know there there's nothing there's really nothing at this point to discuss like because it could be a situation where like if the allegations are true Wander Franco could be suspended indefinitely and be looking at 
uh, actual like jail time, like a Felipe Vasquez, um, the old Pirates closer. Like it could be like that sort of situation. Um, or it could just be a situation like with Trevor Bauer, where Wander Franco is suspended for an indefinite amount of time while the league investigates. That could take months itself. Like, I don't know. It's impossible to say at this point. I have no idea. I don't know. You have any, uh, you have anything on this uh, subject, B. Don? Uh, trying to keep it on the adult side of, of the line here. I mean, all I can say is that there are, you know, there are rumors and social media on both sides of it saying, you know, that here's him with the 14-year-old, and then there's the other side of it that is, she's not 14, she has a kid who's at least like a year and a half or two years old, but I don't, I don't know where the line is. So, like you said, we we're just blind right now. All I can say for our sake right now, not to to kind of circle it back and say it's all about fantasy baseball, but like he's he's not traveling with the team as of right now. Kevin Cash said he's going to address it sometime, you know, Monday or Tuesday before they before they play in that press conference. So we'll see what he has to say. They they've called up. Us Velas Basabe to you know be a utility infielder, and it seems like they're just kind of going to move people around and do the Tampa Bay Rays thing. Since you know half of their infield can play every infield position, they're just going to fill it in. But Basabe was called up to at least help fill in uh, during during this time. Yeah. So I guess We're, let's talk, let's start with him, Greg. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that you know. I think it's pretty telling that Wander Franco isn't traveling with the team uh, to San Francisco. So, you know, on that alone, like even though we are uh, at a place where we don't really know exactly what's going to transpire in the next, you know, 24 to 48 hours or maybe even longer. I think it's pretty telling that Franco didn't travel with the team. Like, I I, I mean, not, not that it's like it lends complete credence to the allegations, but. There's more. It's more than just smoke at this point. If Wander Franco is not traveling with the team, at yeah. least that's my, that's sort of my take on the whole situation. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, with uh, I think Itch was uh, I think Itch put Bazabe in his top ten Rays prospect uh, list in the preseason. So Itch had good feelings on Bazabe, but I do I I do wonder. You know, because it's the Rays and that they, uh, you know, they platoon so many players. Like on Sunday, Taylor Wall, uh, Taylor Walls played shortstop, I believe. Um, or maybe Bazabe did. I, I'm not – actually, I'm not 100% sure. But I, I think Walls got some at-bats. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say because it's the Rays. So it's unclear what Bazabe's um, uh, playing time is going to be. You know, as Itch said in his uh, preseason top 10 raised prospect list uh, ab- about Bazabe, that he was like a Luis Urias type with speed. If that were, you know, if that were to uh, come to fruition in the majors, that's actually really an interesting profile for fantasy. So that's someone who, you know, potentially could have some real play here. Uh, for us, and uh, it does look like his hit tool is a 60 grade hit tool. So if he's like, you know, a 300 plus hitter with 20 steel speed, yeah, I mean that's like, you know, it's better than say Stephen Kwan. It's more interesting, I think, than even Luis Urias, uh potentially if he were to have playing time and you know actually show his tools, but. I, it's you know it's really it's kind of hard to say because we've only seen we we saw him just get called up we don't know what the playing time is going to be like my guess is just like how they called up Curtis Mead my guess is like the you know and before this you know uh, going back a year or two uh, Videl Bruhan like the Rays just because the Rays call up a prospect doesn't necessarily mean the prospect is going to play. So, you know, with that sort of, you know, in mind, Bazabe is interesting 
do I think he plays a whole lot? Mm, I'm not really sure yet. It's really too early to say. If he does play, I'm I'm interested for sure. But I don't I don't think he's going to play. So I would say right now AL only for Bazabe, and you know potentially it potentially that moves to a 15 team mixed league uh, if he starts getting playing time. And then if he starts hitting, then we could start talking about like shallower 12 team mixed leagues. Yeah. And not really helping his case is the fact that they have just a bunch of righties on the roster right now. Just they have three lefties and the rest of the, the lineup is, is right-handed right now. So there's not even a good like place to put him in, except for there's really only him. I would say Paredes can, can play some short, I don't think they want Brandon Lowe at short. So, I mean, there's really just two people really capable of playing a good short or a capable shortstop. So that's playing in his favor. Unfortunately, Paredes can slide over, and then there's a bunch of guys who can play third base for them, or they can slide over and play first base, and Yandy can go to third base. So, again, I think if he plays, like you said, he has, at least in regards to his contact, he doesn't strike out a lot. You know, I don't know if there's a whole lot more power, but I think there's a little bit more speed than, like you said, like the Stephen Kwan, uh, Arias types. We'll see if it if it plays up and and if he gets the time to to show that it plays up in the majors. But somebody keep an eye on, and again, if he's in the lineup, then potentially add him to your roster and see what happens. Yeah, yeah like I, you know, like a, a comment that uh, came in uh, today was like, uh, you know. Bazabe or Mikel Garcia and like Mikel Garcia is out, you know, playing, hitting lead off most days. Like it's, you know, like go with the guy who is playing right now. Bazabe looks really good for long term potentially. But yeah, right now, I mean, you know, there's so little time left. That's like, you know, we're looking at like just over six weeks maybe of the season left. Don't don't be trying to chase, you know, uh, potential at this point unless the guy is actually in the lineup and showing something. Yeah. And, uh, you know, after you say that, I'm going to go and completely shift us in the opposite direction of, hey, great, who should we stash now if we're looking for somebody <laughs> that's that's going to give us a little boost? <laughs> After you say, don't waste your time on these guys. But let's, I mean, there's a lot of leagues where, you know, it's you're just saying, two guys. Uh, oh, oh, you're saying you're talking about September call ups. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're half a month away from September. If you want to get ahead of it, who are you looking forward to, to adding? And just a reminder, it's not the old like 40 man September call up. It's two additional roster spots. So, it, you don't we don't get quite as flooded with triple A call ups as we used to. Yeah, no, I know. And uh, yeah, I mean, if I were, you know, probably going for the playoffs, I would probably call up, uh, you know, and if also and not only if I were going for the playoffs, but if I had a playoff spot sort of secured, I would probably look for like bringing up someone who could just throw some innings or, you know, just to take a little bit of load off of like a, uh, you know, the rotation like, you know, uh, Cole Irving versus Jackson holiday, <laughs> you know, like that's kind of like what, you know, if I were the Orioles, I'd be l- like being like, well, Irving at least can really, you know, help our rotation potentially. So, you know, with that said um, about the Orioles, uh, you know, the Houston uh, curse dad. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I think he's probably at 24. I don't know if what, like, I feel like, with uh, Houston Kerstad, the Oreos uh, outfielder uh, prospect, who was, you know, potentially like uh, people had, you know, high hopes for him for a while. But at 24, I'm starting to feel like maybe he's used in the um, the off season as like a uh, a trade piece. I don't know. Like uh, if the Oreos, the Oreos feel like they have moved in the direction of where they've, they've brought up their guys, you know, aside from like holiday, obviously, but he's much younger. Uh, but they brought up like Adelaide and um, you know, they brought up uh, Gunner. They brought up their guys like the Oreos have. And uh, the fact that they didn't bring up uh curse yet, 
I wonder if they're, you know, if they've cooled on him or if they're just like, you know, they just feel like he, he doesn't really have a place in the lineup. I don't know. It's kind of interesting because, you know, for a long time, people felt like he would have been up already and he's done well in the minors. I mean, he hasn't hit poorly. He's hit for average, uh, has made great contact, has, uh, you know, sh- has shown good power. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, he's at the top of the list for uh, itch for his stash list um, right now um, for September call up. So, yeah, I mean, maybe him. I was saying on Friday in my buy column that Mason Wynn, for me, feels like because I, I think the Cardinals are going to start the year with Win, or at least give him every opportunity to start the year with Win. So, like, and, and the fact that the Cardinals are completely out of it, playing for next year, like, why not give Wynn some at-bats in the major leagues just to get him, you know, and then, uh, you know, he had a little bit of an injury, but I believe it was a minor injury. I don't think it was much of anything. I think it was, you know, he had a glute injury, I believe, which, I don't know, I think he's fine. Um, you know, and then there's also the Mets have, uh, Ronnie, uh, Mercurio, um, who is long overdue to be called up also very, very young, but still overdue to be called up. But, you know, the Mets and the Mets aren't doing, the Mets are playing for nothing. Obviously the Mets actually are playing to lose because so they can get a draft pick. Um, but yeah, uh, Mercurio, uh, Ronnie, uh, Mercurio, whose name I'm totally butchering probably, uh, has been incredible in the minors this year. Like, <laughs> uh, like honestly, like he's probably should have been called up in June. Like he's been so good. Um, and yeah, I think that he, you know, he could potentially get called up in September. He's interesting. Um, Colt Keith, uh, a uh, Tigers um, third baseman uh, prospect, could potentially get called up. He's also been – he's looked very good in the in the minors, but he's he's much younger. Uh, he's only 21, so I don't know if necessarily he gets called up. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, kind of just like it, – it's basically – just, you know, guessing here. I, I don't have any, you know, uh, knowledge of who's going to get called up. I would guess, you know, a name or two that I've just mentioned. And then there might be guys who get called up who, you know, like a Ricky Tieldman, uh, the the Jays um, a prospect arm, the, uh, the young lefty. Like he could get called up. But, like, a guy like that, I wouldn't be surprised to just see him, you know, maybe throw, like, a couple innings in middle relief or something. Like, there's not, you know, there, there's good. And even the guys who I've mentioned already, like uh, Easton Kerstad, for instance, he can get called up by the Orioles and not really play. Like, that could potentially happen, too. Uh, I doubt it. Like, I don't think the Orioles would go in that direction. If anything, like I said, you know, to start this segment, I think the Oreos would be better off getting just calling up an arm just to take some load off of their uh, pitchers. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be – it'll be hard. It'll be interesting. But I don't think – you know, like we said even with B- uh, uh with the Rays, if a guy's not playing he's, in redraft leagues, he's kind of like pointless. That was kind of like why I did my uh, my Friday buy was on Mason Wynn because I feel like if the Cardinals call him up, I think they're going to play him. Like, I don't think the Cardinals would call him up and not play him. So I'm interested in that uh, for sure. I don't think the Keiston Herstad thing, like, I don't think he's necessarily going to play, uh, even though, like, Itch has him at the top of his list. I don't see him just playing every day. Like that would be surprising because that would mean someone would have to go to the bench um, in the outfield. And I just don't see that for the Orioles. Like I don't see anyone going to the bench with it. And like we saw earlier in the year with the Orioles, like Aaron Hicks was healthy. Aaron Hicks played every day, you know? So the Orioles, they're, they're in first place. They're not playing for next year. So I just don't see the Houston Kerstad thing happening. The Mason Wynn thing, I think, could happen. Like, the Mets thing, 
with Mercurio, I think he could potentially play every day if he gets called up because right now the Mets have like, you know, they have Mark Vientos uh, playing third, and he looks like a mess. They sent down Brett Beatty um, to the minors, and I believe for Beatty's service time, uh, I think the Mets get an extra year of service time on Beatty if he stays in the minors for six weeks. So that takes us to almost to the end of September. So I don't think Beatty's coming back. Uh, so I think my, uh, Ronnie Mercurio could potentially come up and play just if nothing else, just to see what they have, because I mean, I think, you know, these guys are in like there's going to be, you know, talk for him to start the year next year. So you want to get him some at bats. So I would say my stash list would probably start with win. And then I'd say uh, Ronnie Mysterio, unless I miss something on Wynn's injury and it's worse than it is. But I don't I don't think that's the case. Yeah. And as you mentioned, the itch has his prospect stash list over there. Haston Kirstad is number one. Uh, in case you're wondering, it's Ronnie Mauricio, the, the Mets prospect that Gray was trying to pronounce. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not really sure where Gray comes up with the pronunciations he comes up with. I'm, not, I'm sure mine aren't correct all the time, but I can tell you my thought process and why it sounds like it does. I, I, I would honestly, love to hear you. I, I had a... Uh... I took 13 years of Spanish, beat on. So let's. So how could you not come up with a better pronunciation for that last name, given that you know how Spanish is pronounced as a language? <laughs> See, the, the interesting thing is, and this is a, this is a totally true story. <laughs> I took uh, I took speech therapy, and I also took Spanish. <laughs> so, <laughs> basically, like I can't pronounce words, and I also can't pronounce Spanish words. <laughs> so it's not just words, words. It's not just Spanish words. It's all words. I, um, yeah. Mer uh, Mauricio? <laughs> Is that it? Ronnie Mauricio? I feel like you could speak fluent Spanish and everything would still come out pronouncing correctly. <laughs> The best is in my uh, who is Gray Albright, um, an ebook available on Razball. You can hear, you can read about my 13 years of Spanish. I did honestly take 13 years of Spanish. It wasn't by choice. It wasn't total. It was. I got really screwed. Um, anyway, long story short, um, B Don, do you have a guy you would stash right now? <laughs> uh, I mean, I think we covered a lot of them. You know, I know that the number two on it's just stash list is kind of the guy that I was looking at, which is Sidane Rafaela. He's just been absolutely murdering the ball. Uh, he has 35 games at AAA. He has 12 home runs in 35 games. He's hitting 317. Um, so, I mean, he's absolutely killing it right now. Uh, Robert Glasser for the Brewers, if they're going to go for it, they could use another arm. You get called up and maybe get a couple of spot starts, but those are, you know, I don't necessarily like grabbing a pitcher for a spot start and, and waiting. Um, the other ones, it's it's kind of hard to say because if a team's out of it, are they going to call up their prospects to get a look at them for next year? Or are they just going to wait and then give them the, you know, four weeks in the minors treatment starting next season? I don't think that's the, I don't think that's the case though anymore really. I feel like that's been uh you know because of the new CBA. I think a lot of that has you know been replaced with like you know if you start the year with the team then you could potentially get more draft picks if you finish in the top 3 of the rookie of the year voting. Like I I think there's other things at play and also with the Mets the Mets are the Mets. I think you know, even though they're saying we're going to play for uh, 2025, I don't. I don't buy that. I think they're going to be playing for next year, so they're going to want their best lineup on the field. Mm, I don't know. I, I'm. I'm not a hundred percent. You know, because like we don't see the the crazy like you know as soon as a guy is available like in June or anything. We don't see that as much anymore. We don't see like the all the guys coming up in June. Uh, we see guys breaking camp and, you know, not necessarily being good, like or like Brett Beatty, 
Like, you know, he was terrible. But, I mean, they, they gave him a shot way before June, you know? I don't know. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. That's okay. No, I, I was also going to th- throw out just that, personally, I would love to see Jackson Holiday get a look here in September. I mean, he, all he's done is crush at every single level, Gray. I, I, what else do you want from him? Does he really need to go to AAA and crush there, too? Let's Let's see what he looks like. But in the same kind of, you know, mold as we were talking about the Houston, like where's he where does he play every day for for Baltimore? I mean he could take over at shortstop and then I guess that shifts Adam Frazier out of the lineup, which I guess is fine. You move Westberg over to second or Gunner to second or maybe Jackson goes to second. I, I don't know how that all works, but I still think they could potentially get him in maybe even either easier than Heston just because the outfield is crowded. Like they have plenty of outfielders that are, are performing right now. Yeah, no, definitely. And they're also, I mean, even though they're probably pretty much a, the number one lock for uh, the playoffs right now, I still think they're, you know, they're, they can't completely coast and just play like, you know, uh, rookies and to see what they have with them, you know. I, yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think they're going to be playing for home field advantage. They're going to, you know, it's going to be like, yeah. I don't, I don't think they're going to coast, uh, let alone just play rookies. Um, you know, they might play them. You know, they might play them a day, a game or two here and there. But for our purposes, that's not going to be very good. So, yeah, that's that's not going to cut it for most of our leagues. Uh, yeah, it's. I mean, they're the O's have just performed great this season. Braves, I think, are the only team with a better record than them, and you know the Braves are a great team that we knew was going to be great. So good for the O's, and hopefully we'll get to see these guys. But they may or may not have a fantasy relevance for us. Uh, Lawrence Butler, or sorry, Yuri Perez, is who we're moving on to, he's called up by Miami. In AAA this year, he had 36 and two-thirds innings with a 3.19 ERA, 0.93 WHIP, 38% K rate, 7% walk rate. In the majors this year, he's pitched 62 innings. He has a 3.19, 1.15, 28 28.6% K rate, 8.2% walk rate. They said that they were just conserving his innings. That's why he was sent back down in the first place. Uh, the first look at him wasn't ideal. I believe he went four innings, gave up four earned runs. But I thought the line was maybe a little deceptive in that I, I personally thought he looked a little better than than that that line is is showing. What, what about the what about the second line where it was four innings and four earned runs? <laughs> it was, it was, there was two lines of four innings and four. Uh, the the Yankees one was the one that I was referring to. The most recent one. Sorry. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, because he also got hit around by he the did. Reds. Um, he did. Yeah, I mean, time. I just wish they would just shut him. Yeah, just, sorry, I didn't. Yeah, not to be, uh, not to be a, a uh, stickler for facts. <laughs> we don't, yeah. we don't operate in facts. Thanks, Gray. Thanks. We don't, yeah, we, we. This is fantasy baseball. Emphasis on fantasy. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I wish they would just shut down uh, Yuri Perez. I think he's just like, I, I think he's gassed, bro. I don't know. I, I would not. Like, there's been some people asking in the comments today on Monday about Yuri Perez versus, like, you know, other guys who I don't think are gassed. And I would go for the non-gassed player. <laughs> I just think <laughs> I just think Yuri Perez is probably, like, should be shut down. Like, I, you know, unfortunately, like, I wish he were fine, but... Yeah, I mean, if anything, they're just messing him up for future years. Like they really, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not crazy about the fact that he's still pitching, and I think he should be shut down. So, you know, with that said, I would, you know, in most mixed leagues, I would probably look for, I would look elsewhere. Um, you know, in deeper leagues, you do what you have to do, but I wouldn't trust Yuri Perez at this point. Um, you know, maybe he goes out and totally proves me wrong in his next start and it, he looks better, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. He, he hasn't looked great since his return. Yeah. It does seem like one of those things where maybe he should just go to the bullpen if they, they're wanting to get him to throw a few more innings and, and just stay active through the end of the season. And then maybe you can bring him out if they make the playoffs and, and let him, you know, get a start if they make the a series, but 
it, it does seem like maybe just now his control isn't where it needs to be. I mean, the velocity is still fine. The the swing and miss is still there, but the control is, is just not right now. Moving over to the A's, Lawrence Butler was called up. So far, he's got a couple starts in center and one in right. In double A, he had 67 games. He had 10 home runs, 13 stolen bases. 53-47 on the counting stats, 285, 352, 465 in 22 games at AAA. He had five home runs, eight stolen bases, hit 280, 340, 512. At least for the time being, it does seem like they're committing to playing him, Gray. Are you interested in Lawrence Butler? Mm, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, for uh, <laughs> the uh, – uh, I guess, like, if you're really desperate in, like, a uh, 15-team mixed league or deeper, you know, because, like, he does have speed and he's got some power. Um, yeah, I mean, his minor league numbers don't look bad, like you, uh, like you said, like you uh, rattled off. I think, you know, maybe I'm being too harsh. I, it's just, like, the A's just in general, like the lineup is just, you know, it's just so uninteresting to me that just the thought of like, you know, carrying Oakland A, it's just not, I don't know. Like Ruiz is good. Uh, Zach Geloff has been great actually for like the month that he's been up, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, Butler has been fine though. His, his minor league numbers have been good. Like you said, I guess you could try him in a 15 team mixed league. Honestly, I'm not interested though in like most mixed leagues. Yeah, I mean it's it's really hard to be very excited about somebody who's hitting in the bottom third of the Oakland lineup. Um but he does bring the power speed combo. I wouldn't be surprised if he just had a you know a, a few stolen bases here at the end of the year if you're in a deeper league, but as you said, in most standard leagues, you're probably not looking at Lawrence Butler. This is a 15 team and, and probably deeper look there. Maybe pay pay attention to the playing time. And if he starts hot, he could move up in that A's lineup just because, I mean, who's really holding him down in the A's lineup that needs to hit above him other than, like you said, Geloff has been great. And uh, Esther Reyes, you know, he probably deserves to, to continue to hit, you know, fairly regularly as well. Over in St. Louis, they called up Luke and Baker. Triple A this year at 84 games. He has 33 home runs. He has 71 runs, 98 ribbies, 334, 439, 720. He's just kind of not had a spot to to start in, Gray. Are you are you interested in Luke and Baker? Uh no. <laughs> not <laughs> not interested. I picked him up in an NO only league and he's on my bench in an NO only league. So I, I think that shows you where I'm at with Luke and Baker. I'm I'm interested in the power if he were to get playing time, but he doesn't even have the playing time right now. And yeah, his you know his strikeout rates out of control um, in the majors at least, but that's it, a small sample size. But anyway, yeah, I'm not interested right now. Yeah, I mean, unless he's going to start at DH or first base, both of which are pretty clogged for the Cardinals. Even as 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 bad as the season's been, you know, the offense itself is is still not lacking for people to start. So I, if you could tell me he's playing every day, they're like, he's going to play DH and he's going to play every day. And, you know, maybe he'll get first base when Goldie goes DH for the day or, or gets day off. Then I would be interested at that point. But right now until he gets playing time. No, I mean, I'm not as, as much as the, uh, the power has been very nice for him this year. Uh, Nelson Velasquez is called up by Kansas city. Uh, he started, at, he led off versus the lefty and Steve Matz, and he's at eighth versus uh, Wainwright, who is the righty, of course. 74 games in AAA for the Cubs. He had 16 home runs, seven stolen bases, hit 253, 333, and 469. In 16 games between the two organizations in the majors, between the Cubs and the Royals, he has five home runs. He's at 270, 325, 730. Are you interested in Nelson Velasquez if he's going to be starting every day, Gray? You got you got any guys that don't suck, bro? <laughs> uh, no, I don't, Gray, because we just talked about all those guys that aren't aren't you know that don't suck but aren't called up yet. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have Nelson Velasquez in uh, 
a draft champions league where I draft, I drafted him back in like, you know, March in one of those draft and hold leagues. Uh, and I drafted him, you know, for his, you know, potential to be a starting outfielder for the Cubs. And now he's a backup outfielder for the Royals. <laughs> so I think, I think we know where Vasquez is, uh, is right now. I mean, he's, yeah, he's, it doesn't look great, but you know, he was good at one point in the minors showing power and speed. So I guess potentially there could be something there, but he doesn't make a ton of contact. So he's probably not going to hit for a good average. Um, right now, he's only facing lefties. So, yeah, that's that's kind of useless for most leagues. Even That's even hard to uh, roster in an AL-only league. So, yeah, yeah. I would probably pass in most leagues. All right, All right. fair enough. I, he might get some some run, and again, he might get the hit, hit lead off someday. So maybe you can play with that if you're in a daily league. But if he's going to hit eighth those other days, that's that's not ideal. Uh, Jonathan Arez, Jonathan Arez, A R A U Z. I'm just going to spell it out because I'm not sure on this one. Gray uh, called up by the Mets. He looks like he's going to be used in a utility middle infielder role. So if you thought the former names weren't you know, anything to write home about. We're just going to get worse from here. Uh, 95 games in AAA, 14 home runs, two stolen bases. He's hitting 244, 344, 429. NL only, are you even interested, Gray? Jonathan Aruz. Aruz? Okay, <laughs> sure. I don't know. Close enough? Um, yeah, no, I'm I'm passing. Go ahead. Go on to the next guy. He's not, <laughs> he's not worth, uh, he's not even worth NL only. Go ahead. All right, I'm just going to rattle off these next two so you can tell me you're not interested. Uh, Jose Azucar was called up by San Diego. It looks like he's he's just going to be a bench bat. He does have five home runs and 18 stolen bases in AAA and 49 games, so a little bit of speed if you're looking for that. But, again, he's a bench bat, so probably not going to give you a whole lot. And Jonathan Ornelas was called up by the Rangers with Josh Jung going to the IL. Still seems like he was called up to be more of a bench presence there, Gray. Any interest in any interest in him either? No, no interest in either. And moving on. All right, let's move on to some other people. <laughs> Trevor Story returns finally. Uh, last year in 94 games, if you don't remember, he had 16 home runs, 13 stolen bases. <laughs> no, he remember. hit 238. <laughs> that was a long time ago, Gray. I didn't remember what he did. I had to go look it up again. I was like, it wasn't impressive. I remember that. I didn't like it. Um, <laughs> you don't remember. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, sorry. I don't know why that's funny. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh, in 10 games in AAA, as he was getting ready, he had three home runs and stolen base, and he was hitting 313, 421, 719. Are you interested in Trevor Story for the five games he'll stay healthy? <laughs> uh, you know, actually, so if Trevor Story, we could do a uh, a bit of a, uh, a, a riddle, not a riddle. <laughs> A, a thought experiment, a thought experiment, with Trevor Story. Um, if Trevor Story were to stay healthy from this point to the end of the year and hit, say, you know, I don't know, say seven homers, um, maybe steal 10 bags, seven, 10, 300 uh, in, you know, roughly 35 games. Where are you drafting him next year? Uh, I'm still probably not touching him till like 190, 200 area. Just I, I have no trust that he stays on the field. I don't think you're. I don't think you're too far off. I think there could be good value here for next year. <laughs> I know we're. I know we're talking about this year, but I just had this thought where like Trevor Story could become interesting to me next year if he were to stay healthy the rest of this year. And if he were to go around where you're saying, because I think he will, I think there's a good chance that he doesn't go before like 175 overall. 175 overall, Trevor Story? I don't know. Sounds kind of interesting to me. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe I'm crazy. But <laughs> like that late, like, you know, uh, Trevor Story or Ahmad Rosario? Probably Ahmad Rosario. <laughs> Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> I mean, you may not, you may not be wrong. Uh, so the, I mean, the, I think the issue pretty much with Trevor Story is 
uh, you know, it's like going to be um, breaking news here, but uh, his injury history is going to be, that's going to be the problem with Trevor's story. Potentially, if he stays healthy, I think he's great. I, I have no problem with Trevor's story if he stays healthy. If he's, you know, able to stay healthy, I'm wondering how. <laughs> How how is he able to stay healthy? Um, so that's you know the biggest concern here. I I don't know if he can stay on the field. Honestly, I I'm fine. I'm fine with going out and grabbing him. I think there's actually you know in shallower leagues there was a few comments today uh, today being Monday about Trevor Story versus other guys who are healthy and who are playing uh, and, you know, it's like Trevor Story or Hit or that other player who I, you know, I don't know. I forget off the top of my head. But, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, okay, Andres Jimenez or Trevor Story right now for this year. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a, a fair question. I think, you know, Jimenez, because he has been healthy and he's been playing and, you know, I mean, he hasn't been great, but he's been decent. Trevor Story had a good game <laughs> so far. <laughs> like that's where we're at with Trevor Story. He had a good game. Like don't get me wrong, he went, you know, 4 for 4, two steals uh on Sunday, I believe it was. It, it was a good game. Absolutely. But he's had one good game in 2 years. <laughs> it's like, you know, you're living a little bit in the past uh, thinking Trevor Story can uh be as good as he was, you know, not only four years ago, but also when he was in Coors, you know, not only was he in Coors, but he was also in the prime of his career. It was like he was 26, 27 years old in Coors. That's a different player than, you know, a 30 year old. Now, you know, with that said, Fenway is a good park. Uh, he can, I could see him doing well in Fenway because of his swing you know, hitting, you know, doubles off of the wall, that that could work for him. I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he hits, you know, uh, 280 or better. I could see that potentially. I don't know if like the, you know, the power and the speed are going to be there quite like they were, but it's a good sign that he has three steals already on Monday. So yeah, uh, I, you know, I'm willing to take a shot on him in every league if you have like a, a need for a shortstop or an MI or even a utility player. I I would grab him in the shallowest of leagues if you're you know hurting for one of those spots. Um, I wouldn't necessarily drop someone who is that valuable to replace him with Trevor Story in like a shot. I'm talking about shallower leagues, and even you know in deeper leagues like in my 15 team mixed leagues. Trevor Story was on waivers. Uh, I don't know if that was probably – it was probably because uh, he wasn't drafted. So this was the first time he was available in uh, for NFBC because if you're uh, – you know, if you're not drafted and you also don't play, you're not available. So – but anyway, with that said, I mean, he went for over $100 in fab in my leagues, uh, and that's out of 1000 So, yeah, I mean, that's a – at this point in the year – that's a decent amount of money to spend on a fab guy. So yeah, I think uh, I think I would too if I had if I would have had the fab money, I would have done it if I had the need. I think Trevor Story is uh, he's definitely worth grabbing. I don't know what we're gonna see necessarily, or if he even stays healthy. So I don't know. That's that's my take on it. Assuming he stays healthy rest of season, is he the number one pickup rest of season for you? Uh, I know that's a lot. There's a lot of open with September call ups to lad, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I think he he could he could potentially be that. Like the good thing is with Trevor Story is if he's healthy, he's definitely playing, and he's going to be hitting in the middle of the lineup. And it's and Fenway is a good park, so yeah, I mean, he could potentially be very valuable for the last six weeks of the season. So yeah, I could see him being the biggest. You know, the last big sort of uh, fab buy. Um, you know, with that said, if, uh, you know, if the Oreos were to, you know, DFA Ramon Urias and bring up Jackson Holiday, 
uh, Jackson Holiday would be the the biggest fab guy. So you know, it's hard to say, but yeah, Trevor Story could potentially uh, be the biggest fab get for the rest of the year. Yeah, I mean, I don't really want to give him. I don't think I would put him down for a 280 average at at any point. But this is a very small sample size, so he could he could do it rest of season. I don't think I don't think that's where I would settle in for him next year. Just it was already trending in the wrong direction before he had injuries and was going to be 31 years old entering the season. But yeah, I mean, he definitely has power speed. He's still a you know professional ball player. Who again, as you mentioned, is going to play? He's going to play in the middle of the uh, of the lineup. So, yeah, I mean, add him in a, in every league and and see what happens. He started off very well, so as long as he can stay healthy, there's there's potential here. Uh, we can just kind of copy paste that into the next guy, which is Chris Sale is back, uh, four and two thirds. He had gave up two earned, seven strikeouts in his first start back. Velocity was around ninety four on average. Uh, when he was performing well earlier in the season, he was up a little bit in the 95, 96 range and then dropped to 93, 94 in the time right before the injury. His ERA by month gray was 675, 242, 245, So in that in between time where the velocity was, wasn't great, the numbers also weren't great. Where are you at on Chris Dale rest of the season? We have a... Uh... We actually have a Wander Franco uh, update. Uh, he was just placed on a restricted list, so he won't be joining the Rays on their road trip. And the Rays and MLB will be investigating into uh, the allegations. So, yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> it's crazy. What an, it would this could be really be, this could be like the worst story of the year. I mean, this could be a really awful story. Um, Can someone not hunt down a birth certificate? Like, is that is that just really difficult? I don't know, man. I don't. I don't know. But it's really. It's a. Uh, I mean, it says a lot that you need to find a birth certificate, right? I mean, you don't want to. You don't want to be with someone who's like, yeah, don't worry. Here's her birth certificate. <laughs> it's like if you need a birth certificate. Maybe you shouldn't be with that person. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Chris Sale. Uh, <laughs> it's incredible segues here on today's show. Today's show brought to you by the worst segues ever. Um, Chris Sale is like basically Trevor's story to me, For uh, but for pitching. I mean, if he's healthy, I think Chris Sale can still be very valuable. I, I think Chris Sale's more cooked than Trevor story, to be honest, like Trevor story definitely has like issues with his strikeout rate, but Chris sale has issues with his strikeout rate too. (laughs) If his velocity is down. So, but his velocity was fine. I believe in his first start back, uh, his K's look good. Like, don't get me wrong. Like I would absolutely grab Chris sale. I think he looks, I think he looks fine. He looks better this year than he did last year. And I think Chris Sale could actually be very valuable. So I'm not like, don't get me wrong. Like I would actually, I would absolutely pick up Chris Sale, but I think he's in a similar boat as Trevor Story in that, like, if he doesn't stay healthy, it doesn't matter what he's capable of. Like, you know, so I would go one star at a time, but I would absolutely grab him in every league. Sure. Yeah, agreed. Grab him every league, see what happens. Uh, you know, his first start wasn't great. He was under pitch count, so maybe wait until he gets up to a full pitch count if you have that luxury. But if not, you know, you could do worse than throwing him out given the random blowups that we've seen from just about every start of this season. The velocity wasn't quite peak as even of this season, so there, there's that. But I'm on the other side of what you said. I think Chris Sale is a, is a lot less cooked than Trevor Story. <laughs> Like, we've seen Trevor Story's skills decline the last four years. It's been on the decline. Like, Chris Sale, when he's healthy, he's put up good numbers still. Like, he's still been a good pitcher. It's just those number of innings is about, about like, 75 now, if you're lucky. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fair. He's, like, uh, I mean, uh, uh, 75 of, like, great innings. 
um, which is actually more than you can say for Degrom, you know. So it's, it's fair, and he was yeah. going like second round. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've heard, I heard people, I heard, uh, you know, fantasy be- uh, baseball uh, uh, perts uh, saying like Degrom is a back end of the first round pick in March. <laughs> I, I heard people say that. So yeah, I mean, you know, Chris Sale, not bad for what you're, uh, you know, for. Small sample size is is never going to get bigger, but at least it's a good sample size. <laughs> Did that make any sense? You, get, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Anyway, yeah. that's fun. We'll, yeah. we'll move on. Uh, over to the Yankees. Uh, this might be a not interested move on topic, but Rodon and Nestor are both headed to the IL after coming off of the IL. Uh, Johnny Brito and Randy Vasquez were called up to take their spots for now. Uh, Brito in seven starts to Triple A has a five four five ERA, one four five four WHIP, a twenty percent K rate, and a just under ten percent walk rate in thirty six innings. Uh, Randy has uh, seventy five innings, four seven six ERA, one five three WHIP, twenty six percent K rate, and an eleven point seven percent walk rate. Randy's at least been good in the majors this year in his nineteen innings. He's a sub two ERA and a one zero five WHIP, but no strikeouts. Brito started really well, and then uh, his final numbers are four seven six one two eight. So, really cooled off. Are you interested in either of these guys that were called up for the Yankees replacements? No, they're they're streamers in most leagues, and also, um, you know, throwing it into the uh, uh, Yankees uh, rotation mentions. Um, they said that Michael King will be stretched out to be a starter. But he was at, I, I believe it was two innings in his first start in that transition to a, becoming a starter. So he's at least three or four starts away from even coming close to a five inning start. Um, you know, unless he gets, you know, five innings in like 60 pitches or something. You know, he just breezes through a lineup uh, for five innings. But otherwise, you know, Michael King's probably a, a good couple weeks away from being, you know, anyone who we're interested in for, uh, you know, most mixed leagues. So, yeah, just, you know, just throwing that name out there, too. But they're all streamers at this point. Yeah, I will say if if you're just looking for, like, innings and strikeouts, you could probably do worse than a Michael King start because you're probably going to get a few innings and good numbers in those innings if you're not chasing wins or saves right now necessarily, but you're just try, trying to get strikeouts over – you know, the shortest number of innings, you could do you could probably do worse than a Michael King start. Uh, I think in that mold, I guess Conley, Peralta, and the wise guy who just returned from the IL all kind of fall into the, you know, if, if Clay Holmes gets replaced or gets injured, the, the closing hierarchy. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, more or less. Thanks I, for the support, Gray. I don't, I don't agree. Yeah, I don't agree with 100% of all that, but yeah, it's. I'm Who do not... you think it is then? Who do you think it is in New York? I mean, what? For the if, if something happened to the homes, you think King oh, goes for, back oh, to the for, Oh, for the uh, closer? Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think it's going to be probably Holmes, unless he's injured. Then pro- I guess Wandy, uh, <laughs> maybe. Uh, Tommy uh, Middleton. Middleton's got. I think Middleton's got some uh, history closing uh, potentially. I don't know if las- lasagna is a guy that they're going to use, but it's that would be such a mess. I was um, I was actually disagreeing with uh, Michael King stuff. <laughs> I was disagreeing with the stuff you said <laughs> prior to the home stuff. Okay, um, I, I'll, okay. okay. so I, not not to go too far down this because this is probably irrelevant. But if I were chasing, you know, anything, I'd probably be looking for a guy who's going to come in after Michael King. At least you have a chance for wins or something. Whereas, like, you know, Michael King is good. Like, don't get me wrong. But the first three innings of a game, like, that does nothing for me. (laughs) I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I've just never heard of, like, trying to pick up an opener which is basically he would be an opener basically so yeah i don't know that doesn't in, that doesn't interest me as much as picking up the guy who's going to come in after the opener 
But, you know, your mileage may vary. If you're going for just strikeouts, then I, I see your point. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought I'd preface that with a lot of ifs in, in what you're doing and yeah, that's what you're chasing. But, yeah, that's I, I, I get I what you're saying. That's why I didn't even want to say it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I get what you're saying. He's not going to give you that. So, yes, maybe the guy after him, him in his old role, probably gave you more opportunities at wins and saves than what it will, he will in his new role. Um, so, yeah, if anything, he might actually lose a little bit of value, even if you get an extra inning out of him once he stretch out. Cause by the time he's fully stretched out, it's probably, you know, it's, it's time for the playoffs of the real baseball, and which means our leagues are, are done. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jose Abreu is, is going to the IL. Uh, John Singleton recalled. Uh, David Hensley recalled. I, I think I might have just put Jose Abreu back on the wrong team. Um, just in my, nope, nope, I was right. I'm, I'm okay. We're, we're okay. Let's move on. Um, Jose, so Jonathan Singleton, I, I mean, we saw David Hensley for like a good amount this year and he's, he's nothing to write home about John Singleton, former Astro who returned to the Astros. Are you, if you, are you, if you thought, him? if you thought David Hensley was nothing to write home about, wait till you get to John Singleton. <laughs> I mean, his numbers are at least better than David Hensley. Granted, he's a 31-year-old in AAA, but uh, <laughs> 20 home runs, 289. <laughs> granted, granted, he was 64 years old in AA, but you know what? What's, what's a couple of years amongst friends? I, uh, I will say this. Um, John Singleton does have power. So if you're, if you're looking for nothing but power... I think it's uh, it's probably pretty telling that he has 130 games career in the major leagues and he's hitting 168 in that time. <laughs> so I wouldn't I wouldn't expect a ton of average or anything besides the occasional homer. But for you know for the occasional homer, you you probably can do worse in uh, like an AL only league. All right, all right. Thanks for giving me a little bit. Thanks for giving me a little bit there, Gray. I appreciate appreciate that. <laughs> Tossing me a bone. Um, <laughs> just as a, a note to both of our rosters, Gray, Alec Manoa was sent back to the minors so he can no longer hurt us anymore. Oh, my God, man. <laughs> he's awful. He's an awful person. <laughs> no, he's not. He, maybe he's not an awful person, but he the things he did to my teams will not soon be forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> he did... To my teams, what Jose Barrios did last year, <laughs> I can't, I can't avoid these. Next year, Manoa is going to be so good on other people's teams. It's going to be <laughs> like, oh my god, dude, does he have it out for me? Why is he now being so good? Alec Manoa is going to win the Cy Young next year on other people's teams. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> guaranteed, it will happen. And. Jazz Chisholm's going to go 50-50 and stay healthy all year. On other people's teams, not on my team, because I <laughs> won't be drafting them next year. But on other people's teams, oh, so good. But you're going to draft Daniel Cruz again. Oh, I have to. Yeah, you know, 100% <laughs> do that one again. Uh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, I might I might get back in on Jazz. Um, but Manila, there's no way. No chance. No <laughs> chance no at all chance. you're going to jump back in. There's no chance I will ever go back in on, on Alec Manoa um, next year. If you Alec went 350th Manoa, overall, you wouldn't take him. Alec Manoa? No. I think he's I think he's pretty cooked, man. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on with him, honestly. I Yeah, I mean, at 350 overall in a draft and hold league, sure. Yeah, I would draft him there. Um, I wouldn't expect anything, though. But he's like... I mean, it's really sort of, uh, you know, indicative of how uh, how bad he looks is like his command is a mess even in the minors, like even in like the complex league, even in double A, like he hasn't looked good even when they've sent him down. I think, you know, maybe it's a um, whatchamacallit, a uh, mechanics issue. Maybe it's maybe it's something more serious. I don't know. I, I honestly, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I hope he gets right with the Lord. <laughs> no, <laughs> I hope he gets right with, uh, you know, with his mechanics and he's able to come back. Like, you know, I don't have anything against him. But, yeah, it's it really was 
pretty terrible owning them this year. <laughs> Man, it was not fun. But neither no. was Lance Lynn. <laughs> so, you know, uh, it is what it is. No, Alec Manoa was not, not a fun one to own. So it is what it is. Uh, I, I I guess for next season, even though you're not in on him, he you think he's probably going to get another start at the rotation, though, right? Like, I mean, he for had what, two great for seasons what? for them. For next year? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he'll definitely be – he'll go into camp probably with the, the fifth spot, I would guess. Um, but, I mean, they would really – I mean, he he really has to actually show something. Like, he's – I don't think he's guaranteed the fifth spot. Like, if he looks awful in spring training next year, he could easily start the year in the minors. Yeah. Minors are – have had the the long relief role. That would be that would be a, just a career killer for him, and, and or at least in regards to our game, and and honestly for for him too, because you don't get paid nearly uh, the money for long relief as you do as a as a good starter as he was. Yeah, no, exactly. Let's move over to the closers, Gray. I only think there's a couple of situations discussed. Uh, Detroit being one of them. Uh, Jason Foley and and Bo Briss seem to be kind of. Going back and forth and then splitting that. Are you interested in either of those guys? Uh, they've both been good. Unfortunately, you know, a committee with the Tigers, uh, a team that doesn't win a lot, and a committee sort of, you know, which a committee will then, you know, take away some of the ops for each guy. So, yeah, it's not a great situation, but they both have been good. Uh, I think Jason Foley is a guy who I actually have in a couple leagues. So, um, yeah, I mean, I would pick them up. I, but they'd also probably be, like, the first guys off my team if I needed to pick someone else up. Like, you know, if you needed to stream a, stream a pitcher, I'm fine dropping Jason Foley. But if you have room for him, I'm also fine, you know, rostering him. Yeah, just kind of depending on the the depth of your bench and if you throw them in every day, um, you know, you can put them in when you have space and and move them or or cut them if you don't. Uh, Moving over to another seeming committee is Jojo Romero and Giovanni Gallegos in St. Louis. Is there one of these guys that you feel better about, Gray, or is is this kind of another similar situation? Yeah, no, I think it's kind of the same uh, situation, whereas, like, you know, in one league – where I have Gallegos, I think I actually benched him this week. It's a weekly league. So I benched him for uh, a starter. And then uh, another league, I have JoJo, and he might be getting benched for a starter too. Like So I have them in like weekly leagues. I just, I'm not starting them because I just can't rely on you know them getting enough saves to make it worthwhile to start them. But if it was a daily league, I could see, you know, starting them and, you know, moving them, like it, dropping them if you needed to pick someone up, like I said, uh, you know, just before with Jason Foley or uh, Bo Briskey. Yeah, I, I'd agree. They kind of fall in that same same area. Maybe maybe St. Louis has a little bit better chance at winning a couple more games than Detroit, so maybe the, you move them up slightly. But, uh, again, it, until they go to one decisively, it, it is kind of a – you know, hope for the best situation, roster, and, and start if you have the space. All right, Gray, why don't we go ahead and do some waivers, and then we'll get out of here. Okay. All right, so if you go to the seven-day player raider on rasball.com, free tool, hmm, you have guys who are hot. Uh, so looking at those names, you have guys like Kerry Carpenter's at the top of the list for guys who are under 100% rostered and who are hitting well. Kerry Carpenter actually could be interesting just in general, like um, potentially even next year. I don't know. Kerry Carpenter's sort of gotten on my radar a little bit this year. Anyway, he's been hot uh, recently. Also, Jack uh, Zach Geloff uh, has been hot. He is, um, he's been hot since he got called up about a month ago. Like, he's been really good. Um, Brian Hayes has been really hot since he returned from the I.L., I was really close to dropping him uh, last week, and then he returned, like, incredibly hot. Um, Carlos Correa has been hot. I think he's probably uh, rostered in most leagues, but, yeah, he's been hot. Uh, Nick Allen's even been hot, uh, middle infielder for the A's. Josh Bell, ever since the trade, has looked really good. Um, 
Also, since the trade, Tommy Pham has been really hot. Uh, and then there's also, uh, speaking of the uh, Tigers with Kerry Carpenter, uh, his guy right next to him in the lineup, Spencer Torkelson, has been really hot recently. Uh, and then also in the Brewers, Andrew Montessero has been hot uh, for the last week. So, yeah, definitely some. there's some guys for, uh, you know, to pick up in your leagues depending on the size of your league. Yeah, definitely use the free tools that we, we have available to you at Razzball. Uh, you know, give you the guys who are, are getting hot. And then, of course, if you're paying for the tools, you can get the projections and the matchups and everything else. Uh, also, looking at things that you get on Razzball, you can go out there and see about your streamers. I'll give you a few that I like, which is JP France versus Seattle, Chase Silseth versus Tampa Bay. Javis Tyon got kind of lit up his last outing, but versus Kansas City, I'm not overly scared about that one. Cutter Crawford's been really good. At the Yankees, it's not ideal for the location and team, but I, I think he's been performing well enough. I feel comfortable starting him and recommending him. Seth Lugo versus Arizona. Logan Allen has two starts. He's also been struggling, but at Cincinnati versus Detroit, two starts this week. I mean, if you if you're going for just accumulation at this point, you have to kind of take some chances with the two start guys, even if it's a little uncomfortable. Uh, Brandon Fat at San Diego, Ranger Suarez at Washington, Ross Stripling versus Tampa Bay, Kyle Hendricks gets a two step versus the White Sox in Kansas City, and Clark Schmidt's been pretty good actually since his recall. He's at Atlanta, which is t- almost terrifying, but then versus Boston is a little bit less scary. And again, two start week, so. Okay, starting him if you are, again, chasing accumulation. Anything else, Gray? Uh, no. All right, then. If you have specific <laughs> questions, as always, find us on Twitter. I am at RazBeatOn. Gray is the owner of the at RazBall account. Go ahead and subscribe, listen, rate, review, wherever you listen to us or watch us on YouTube.com slash RazBallFantasy. Till next time, I'll talk to you later, Gray. All right, lates.